So good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I'll be presenting our paper titled Query Flow, Verifying Network-Wide Invariance in Real Time. Uh, that presents our network debugging tool called Veriflow, which is designed to detect faults in networks uh, in real time. I'm working in this project along with Zhu Anju and Wen Junju, and we are supervised by uh, Professor Ma Matthew Caesar and Professor Biden Graf Frakes. So, oops. So at the beginning, let us look at some challenges in uh, network debugging. So modern networks are large and complex, uh, cons consisting of hundreds, even thousands of devices uh, from different vendors of different types. Now, complex interactions between these devices running different contract link protocols uh, makes ne network configuration quite, quite a challenging job for network operators, which often leads to misconfiguration. Also, there exist unforeseen bugs that may be present in network software, which are very difficult to um, detect before the software is deployed into the network. And it is very difficult to test the large network state phase, uh, and it's very difficult to exhaustively test every possible event scenario that can occur into the network when the network is in operation. So these misconfigurations and bugs uh, affects network operations in different ways. They can allow unauthorized packets to enter a secret zone into the network and also make services and infrastructures prone to attacks, such as DOS attacks or injection of malware. And these errors uh, makes critical services unavailable, uh, affecting network performance uh, that results in customer dissatisfaction and reduction in revenue. That is why network operators usually deploy some form of uh, traffic monitoring and network debugging techniques to keep their network free from errors. Now there exists different debugging techniques and traffic monitoring te techniques currently in place. First of all, we have traffic and flow monitoring techniques such as those software based on Cisco's NetFlow. And they're quite useful in detecting traffic anomalies in a network. However, a more systematic approach is configuration verification, where we can take the configuration files from different network devices and uh, run checks on those to detect faults in network. However, in one of our earlier work in Sitcom 2011 and Peter, we showed that this configuration verification technique suffers from some, from some limitation. As in this technique, we use the configuration as input, and the rest is predicted. This configuration verification uh, cannot accurately model the actual dynamics of the network. So this prediction is difficult and also present of multiple configuration languages and different control plane protocols running in the network makes the job of prediction even harder. And it, this prediction process also misses some implementation bugs that can be present into the control plane software affecting the data plane state only. That is why in our pro group, we focus on data plane verification. So in this technique, we use the data plane state as input and we predict the network behavior from that. However, in this case, the degree of prediction is much less and we are closer to the actual network behavior. So this technique allows us to uh, perform unified analysis for multiple control plane protocols and look for bugs in the control plane software that only affects the data plane. This data plane verification technique has shown potential in some of the recent works on network debugging. There was a work called Flowchecker that used binary decision diagrams to model the network state of an open flow network and then run checks on that particular model. Then we have our earlier work, Anteater, and work from Stanford University header space analysis, which were used on real networks, and they were able to find real bugs using this data plane verification technique. However, these works are slow in reacting to network events as their running time varies from a few seconds to a few hours. So these works detect the problem after the problem has already damaged the network. So this brings us to the motivation of our current project, Veriflow, where we try to answer the question whether it is possible to uh, verify network-wide invariance in real time. So in order to check every update to the network as the network state evolves, we need to ensure that we can check those updates uh, very fast, very quickly, before they reach the data plane. And if we can achieve that, we will be able to block problematic changes from reaching the data plane, provide immediate warning to the network operators when a problem gets detected, and ensure that the data, data plane is free from any sort of errors. However, there are some challenges in real-time verification. The first challenge is obtaining real-time view of the network. Now, SDNs can help us to achieve this due to the centralized view of the data plane state, which is available at the centralized controller. The next challenge is the verification speed, and unfortunately, the off-the-shelf techniques are not fast enough to be used here. This brings us to our tool, Veriflow, 
which is capable of running network-wide invariant checks in an SBN in real time. And this tool is capable of checking key network invariants, such as routing loops, black holes, violations of access control policies, and also allows to write uh, custom invariants, custom query algorithms. This tool functions by constantly monitoring the network by sitting as a layer between the network controller and the network devices, builds a model of the network behavior as the network experiences changes, and runs custom query algorithms on that model to look for violations of network properties in real time. Let us have a quick look of how Veriflow operates. Whenever the network controller sends a new rule to the network, it is inserted, inser intercepted by Veriflow. Then Veriflow generates a set of equivalence classes, a set of packet sets that are going to be affected by the new rule. Details of these equivalence classes will be explained in the next two slides. Once the equivalence classes are generated, for each of the equivalence classes, we generate individual forwarding graphs, modeling the forwarding behavior of each of those affected equivalence classes or packet sets. And on those forwarding graphs, we run custom queries to look for problems. If there is no problem detected, the good rules are sent immediately to the network. But if a problem gets detected or al al an alarm is raised, the problem is blocked and a report is uh, generated for the network operator to view, showing the type of violation that occurred and also the set of affected packets that falls in that suffers got that violation. Now let us look uh, into detail of the different phases of Veriflow's operation. The first phase is used to limit the search space as much as possible by using the new rule and all the rules, in the, in all the existing rules in the current network that are going to uh, determine the changes in forwarding behavior of a particular set of packets. So whenever we get the updates, Based on the new rule and the set of affected uh, existing rules, we generate a set of packet sets called equivalence classes, where each packet in an equivalence class experiences the same forwarding behavior throughout the network. Let us have a quick example with the help of uh, the destination IP address plane. So if we have a forwarding rule specifying 0 slash 0 in the data plane, then it covers the entire address space. If we add a new rule 0 slash 1, then it covers half of it. If we add a new smaller rule covering smaller range, 64 slash 3, even a smaller range gets covered. Now, in this example, if this is the given data plane state, then we have four different equivalence classes. Now, what Veriflow does always focuses on those equivalence classes that are covered by the new rule and ignores the rest. In this example, I only used one field, so it looks simple, but actually it is more complicated due to the presence of multiple header fields in the packets. And we deal with this with the help of a data a tri data structure that helps us to efficiently compute the, uh, the affected equivalence classes spanning multiple fields. So the tri data structure we use actually has three branches at every node, zero, one, and wildcard branch. All these branches represent a particular bit in the packet header. And in order to handle multiple fields, we actually have multiple levels of tri structure representing each of those fields. And at the bottommost try, at the leaves of the bottommost try, we store the leaves, uh, we store the actual rules that are currently present into the network. Now, this structure allows us to easily look for overlapping rules. In this example, anything to the left of the wildcard branch that leads to B is covered by the rule B. So if we want to add a new rule, for example, C, that covers both A and B, then we start from the root of the try and then look for the branch where C will be stored. During this period, we also look for the rules that are currently present under the range of rule C. And these, all these rules are used to generate the different equivalence classes that are whose forwarding behavior may get influenced if the new rule C is added into the network. The next step of Veriflow is generating uh, the set of uh, forwarding graphs representing all those, uh, the forwarding behavior of all the affected equivalence classes. So we go through the try structure one more time and figure out all the rules that can dictate the forwarding behavior of those equivalence classes and build the graph. And we have, so we have one forwarding graph per equivalence class that got affected. And these forwarding graphs contains all the information to answer different queries that the network operator or user may post to Veriflow. And the last step, once the forwarding graphs are generated, we run custom queries to look for violation of network invariants, such as, excuse me, such as like absence of black holes or loops or access control violations. And if the rule is good, it is immediately sent to the network, that rule generates a diagnosis report reporting the problem. Veriflow also provides an API uh, for network users to write custom invariant checkers. 
So they give access to the underlying affected equivalence classes and forwarding graphs. And within these two, the verification becomes a standard graph traversal algorithm. With the help of this API, the network user will be able to actually uh, manipulate the way the forwarding graphs are traversed and the alarms are handled. This will be useful uh, in, in SDN setting because in SDN, like both network users and network operators will be developing custom software uh, to make efficient use of the network and they will be uh, able to incorporate the verification logic right into their application. So let us look at some experimental results uh, from our work. So the first experiment, we simulated an IP network uh, using a locket fill topology of 172 routers. And then we uh, used uh, uh, BGP rip trace from the route risk project containing 5 billion rib entries to initialize the network and then use another trace of 90,000 BGP updates to simulate dynamic changes to the network. As each rule was replayed into the network, we used very flow through for loops and black holes. And we micro benchmarked very close different phases of operations as we ran that experiment. In the first plot, we show uh, CDF of the running time of different phases of very flow. Here in the x-axis, we have the time in milliseconds in log scale. So from this figure, we can see that Veriflow is able to uh, check those rules, like most of the rules, within one millisecond. In fact, 97.8% of the rules from the trace were checked within one, one millisecond. However, there were some rules for which Veriflow was substantially slower as it took like tens of milliseconds to check those rules. The problem with this case is the number of affected equivalence classes. So whenever the number of affected equivalence classes are large, Veriflow takes more time. This is shown in this plot, where in the x-axis we show the number of equivalence classes that got affected by a new rule. In the y-axis we have the average verification time. So we can see that as the number of affected equivalence class increases, Veriflow suffers from run time, uh, run, uh, increased running time. Now, these number of ECs strongly represents, uh, the, uh, affects Veriflow's running time. However, um, we saw that these cases are quite rare in the data trace. However, even if uh, we have this large number of equivalence classes, what we can do is we can run checks in parallel and uh, maybe like check the uh, rules uh, without blocking the rules uh, to be sent to the network in order to ensure, uh, in order to not to disturb the network. In the next experiment, we emulated an open flow network using Mininet and uh, we used uh, the same rocket fill topology, 172 switches and attached a single host to every switch. Here we used the Knox controller along with a learning switch app. And uh, what we did in the host is each host was initiating a TCP connection to a random host uh, having a configurable delay between two consecutive TCP connection attempts. So in this experiment, whenever a host was sending a TCP sync packet to the first switch, the switch not being able to, uh, uh, due to the uh, absence of a specific uh, flow rule in, in its flow table, sends a packet and message to the controller saying that I don't know how I should forward the packet. And eventually the controller sends a flow rule uh, that says, okay, install it in your fib and next from the, the next packet will be served to the switch without contacting the controller. Whenever this happened, all the flow rules were uh, intercepted by very flow and we looked for, again, loops and uh, black holes. So in the first figure, we show how the network performance in terms of the update throughput that comes from the network controller is affected if Veriflow is enabled. Here in the x-axis, we have the number of TCP connections attempts uh, that were made per second by the different hosts present in the network. And in the y-axis, we have the update throughput in uh, messages per second. So here we see that like the overhead uh, of Veriflow is quite low. And uh, in most of the cases, we found that like the overhead remains within like 5% of the actual performance. The next figure shows how the run, runtime performance of Veriflow varies as we manipulate the number of packet header fields that are used during uh, verification. So we use the same TCP experiment as before, and what we did is we controlled the number of header fields that is used to build the try structure and perform the verification. Knox was sending rules consisting of all the uh, values for all the headers that is supported by OpenFlow 1.1.0, 14 in total. And we selectively used a few of these rules uh, of this field to run this experiment, starting from 0 to 14. 
with the x-axis, we have the tail count, and the y-axis, we have the average verification latency. And we see that, like, some of the, uh, as we increase uh, the number of fields, obviously the running time of very first suffer, and among the 14 fields, five of them contributed more into the running time. So here, uh, in our current implementation, we implemented an um, optimization strategy uh, that caused some of the fields to be handled more efficiently than the others, and that's why there is a large uh, difference between some of the fields. And also there is another thing. Um, whenever we add more f uh, fields into the verification, it increases the possibility of generating like additional finer equivalence classes, which eventually like increases the running time as each of these equivalence classes will be handled uh, separately uh, consecutively. So more fields, more equivalence classes, and a longer verification time. So this brings us uh, to the conclusion of my uh, talk. So to summarize, uh, Veriflow achieves uh, real-time verification by sitting as a layer between the SGN controller and the network devices, and it can handle uh, multiple fields efficiently by checking those rules in hundreds of microseconds. And uh, it also exposes an API for the network users to write custom query algorithms. We are currently working on some uh, interesting future directions, and one of which is uh, extending or improving Veriflow's design so that we can handle uh, packet rewrites, packet transformations more efficiently. And also we are working on a distributed version of Veriflow where we want to handle a network where there are multiple distributed controllers sending rules to the network at the same time. And that ends my presentation. Thank, thank you all for attending the talk. San Sanjay Rao from Purdue. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering how general your approach is. Like, uh, what, what is the class of errors that it can find? Are there configuration, are there types of configuration errors it cannot detect? Be because you talked about equivalence classes, it seems like it could catch things like firewall rule errors or things like access control list. But there could be a broader class of configuration errors. So I'm wondering if you could comment on the generality of your approach or coverage of your approach? Okay, so the question is, thank you for the question. So the question is how general Veriflow's approach is in detecting different classes of faults. So in our work, we looked at the data plane. So whatever affects the data plane and presents, uh, the, and whatever information is present in the data plane can be used to build, this, can be used to build the state inside Veriflow. Mm -hmm. So if a problem is visible at the data plane and Veriflow's internal structure models it properly, then it will be able to detect those problems using the current structure. So currently we use the data plane where we only had forwarding rules and firewall. So any reachability problems was, uh, were detected. Uh, however, if you want to look for like uh, problems that deals with performance, maybe like bandwidth utilization, like you want to constrain some links to have a lower utilization, those information if incorporated into the forwarding wraps and the forwarding wrap is annotated properly with those attributes, Veriflow will be able to catch those violations of those properties too. So it depends on how we model the data, what information we extract from the data plane and use for the modeling of the forwarding graph. And, and could it be used to catch errors that might not be lo localized to one device, but might span multiple devices? And oh yes, d definitely. Yeah. Because if a new rule affects a packet set and it changes its forwarding path, yeah. so as in SDN, we have a global view of the network. So once the forwarding path changes, the very flow process will follow the changed forwarding path and look for violations of error that may be present in some other device at this current data plane state. Okay, thanks. Sure. Uh, Yan Chen from Northwestern University. Um, uh, in your algorithm, I think you assume you have a global view of the topology, right? Just mentioned that. And uh, I wonder how that can be applied to the like, inter-domain routing. You know, is there a delay in the you know, BGP update to the, to the router? So the controller may probably doesn't have um, the real updated global view. So how does your system work with that? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. So the question is uh, whether ver is Veriflow can be applicable for inter-domain routing where multiple independent ASs are actually updating their float, float tables or float states uh, independently at the same time. Yes, so as long as the controller is able to uh, get notified for the real-time updates, so all the checks we do will be real-time and valid. But if there is a delay between the data plan getting changed and the uh, rule getting reported to the controller, 
then Veriflow may produce some like uh, report that are not true at this current moment. So if we don't get a real-time stream of updates, Veriflow cannot ensure real-time detection of problems that are currently present into the network. Okay, thank you. Yes. Nasib Moshe from the University of Southern California. Uh, I want to know if you up, uh, have applied your technique or the, in the batch case, when we have, for example, 90K rules or more rules. And uh, for, uh, in that case, I think if the average delay is one millisecond or two millisecond, then the total delay of the batch case will be larger. And as we know the, uh, the total n uh, number of rules and their shapes, we may apply uh, more intelligent techniques. For example, first, apply the larger rules than uh, smaller rules. Have you checked this? Oh, oh, okay, so thank you for the question. So the question is uh, whether we can intelligently alter the rules as we replay with Veriflow in order to improve performance. So no, we haven't performed that because like, like we only mainly focused on what happens if new rules get in injected into the network one by one. So we, we are assuming that we will not have the ability to reorder the rules in a real network when the net changes are dynamic. So yeah, we haven't looked at that yet. Hi, Hi. <coughs> I'm Kakeru Inoue from uh, Japan Science and Technology Agency. Um, my question is on the scalability in terms of memory, because memory can be a bottleneck in formal methods generally. So how, how much memory was used in the experiments, and which is a major factor, uh, I mean, the try or the forwarding graphs? Uh, this is a good question. So the question is like how much memory does w w did like very for needed. So yes, it is like quite memory expensive. So mm -hmm. for the BGP experiment that we run with mm -hmm. five million entries, the forwarding uh, the try itself mm -hmm. took around like um, I would say uh, five or six gigabytes of memory. Five. And once we generated the forwarding graphs, and as we keep all the, so in this experiment, we kept all the, for, generated all the forwarding graphs and then ran the queries on those forwarding graphs. So mm -hmm. it took another like six gigabytes of memory to actually store those forwarding graphs okay. for the largest cases. Yeah, it's quite memory expensive. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.